we've now we've now looked at the fact that this light has a fo have have photo it has photons and we calculate that using e equals to hf we've also calculated that every single metal has something called a work function okay which is the minimum energy needed minimum energy needed so when will an electron be released an electron will be released if your um, if the energy of the photon is bigger or equal to the work function. Okay. So mathematically, it will be whenever the E is bigger than the work function or bigger than or equal to the work function. You can also say that um, an electron <clears throat> will be released if the if the frequency now remember i'm not talking about the threshold frequency i'm talking about the photon frequency is greater or equal to threshold frequency and so that's like f must be bigger than or equal to f0 okay so let's say we've got energy coming in from this light and let's say that that energy of every single photon is 20 joules so that means that this one has 20 joules this one has 20 joules this one has 20 joules they all have 20 joules now let's say that the work function is 17. Then can you guys see that an electron will be released from the metal? Because the work function tells us that you need 17 joules of energy to remove an electron. However, every single one of these photons has enough energy. They have 20 joules of energy. So what is going to happen to the extra energy because the law of nature tells us that energy cannot be created or destroyed it can only be converted from one form into another form so if you have 20 joules of energy coming in and 17 joules is going to be used up to remove the electron that's almost like you're trying to break this little bond over here between the electron and the proton. So you need 17 joules to be able to do that. The extra three joules of energy, the extra three joules is going to be converted into um, kinetic energy, kinetic energy. So electron will have three joules of kinetic energy. So have a look here, guys. If we started off with 20 joules that came in from the photon, then where did that go? Well, that went to the work function. And then where did the remaining energy go? kinetic energy. So we can see that the law of nature is being conserved. 20 joules coming in, 20 joules is being used. That's the law of nature. What if the work function of the metal is going to be 20? 
then what happens then is the electron is still going to be released, but then the, the, the electron will not have any kinetic energy. So I know that that sounds a little bit weird, but the electron is literally just going to, it's literally just going to um, break away from the proton. And then it's just going to like, I don't know, like just chill there on the surface, but it's not going to really, it's not going to really be able to move away, but it's still going to be released from the metal, but it won't have any extra energy to move away. Okay. But we must remember that if the energy of the light is the same as the work function, then the electron will be released, but it just won't have any extra kinetic energy. Okay. Now, it's been a while since some of us have done kinetic energy. So remember that kinetic energy, the formula, is a half mv squared. Now, remember that we are talking about electrons. And so we need to know what the mass of an electron is. Now, that is a constant number given to you on the period, not on the periodic table, on your formula sheet in that little table as 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. That is a constant that will be given to you. So we said that um, all the extra energy is going to be converted into the kinetic energy of the electron. We said that uh, kinetic energy has this formula where m is the mass of an electron with the following constant. There is one formula that we are going to use for this whole chapter. Well, this is like the this is like the big formula uh, that will allow us to be able to do this chapter really nicely. And I'm going to show you guys that now. So what you guys need to think about in this chapter is the following. And I've already shown you this, but let's just do it again. So we're going to have energy coming in from the light. Actually, let's stick with our same color scheme that we did just now. Let's use blue. I think I used blue. Okay, so the energy of the light is coming in. There's going to be a bit of a argument between the electrons and the protons. They are going to have a bit of a fight with each other because they have to break up. And that's called the work function. And then if there is any energy left over, it will be converted into kinetic energy. And then this one here is energy of light. And so the law of nature tells us that the energy of the light is going to be used up to use the different... It's going to be used up to release the electron, which is the work function. And then if there is any leftover energy, then that will go into kinetic energy. And this is the main formula that governs this entire chapter. Okay. And if you now have a very good idea of where each part came from, trust me, this chapter is going to be quite nice for you. So if you understand this formula, and this formula is given to you on your formula sheet, then you are golden. Then you really understand everything so far. And remember, I've showed you that to calculate this one, you are going to use HF to calculate. Oh, no, this one is fine. But there is another formula here. You could use HF0. And then this one here is half MV squared. And then remember that sometimes to calculate this one, they're going to give you wavelength instead. So then you would rather use this formula and then you would get your frequency by doing this. Okay, that's all for this one here. Formula that governs this entire chapter. Um, there's a nice little summary. Uh, we've got the energy of the light, the work function of the metal, and the remaining energy will be converted into kinetic energy.